way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, gray and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them, what they did, and why they had to be brave for us. So as we celebrate Memorial Day, I want to take just a moment, I know it's a small crowd tonight, but if there's anybody here who's active military, retired military, or reserves, if you ever served, if you can please stand. From the bottom of my heart and from the heart of everybody here at the church, thank you for your service. See, no matter what the media says, to, this weekend is not the unofficial start of summer. This weekend is to honor those that fought to protect our country, to protect the freedoms that we have to this day. And it's a day to remember those that gave. The ultimate sacrifice. There are little boys and little girls that will not be able to have a birthday with a loved one will not be able to celebrate Christmas with the loved one because they gave the ultimate sacrifice. I'm reminded this weekend of both my grandfathers. They both served in World War II. My dad's dad dropped out of high school his freshman year, lied about how old he was so he could serve, and tried three times to enlist, but he, wasn't, he couldn't weigh enough to be a soldier. So the fourth time going in, he stuffed his pants full of playing cards and pocket knives and stuff just so he could weigh enough to serve. And he served in the cavalry in the Pacific Front, liberating or fighting in the Battle of Midway, fighting amongst a lot of the Pacific Islands after Pearl Harbor was bombed. And then he was sent over here to Fort Carson for a year to train to go and liberate concentration camps in Eastern Europe. And he would tell us the stories and he would tell us the horrific details of what he had to witness of what they did in those concentration camps. And he wanted to make sure that all of us knew that that would never happen again. My other grandfather, I knew he served in the army, but I didn't know until his funeral that he was at the Battle of Normandy that he was one that survived and saw things so horrific that he could not talk about it. And I didn't find out about it till his funeral. I have friends who served in Vietnam who've lost legs, who still have nightmares because of what they witnessed, but when they came home, they didn't get what my grandfathers got. They didn't get a ticker parade. They got spit upon, yelled at, cussed at. And, that, and they didn't get a hero's welcome. And I texted one of my friends this morning and just said, thank you for your service. And it broke my heart, the response I got back. He said, thank you, you made my weekend because you're the only one to ever thank me for this. And how long has Vietnam gone, been done and over with? And I'm the first person every year, I'm the only person every year to thank him for his service. So this weekend, let's not grieve, but let's remember the sacrifice that those have made. Like President Reagan said in the video, they paid a price for a debt that cannot be repaid. 
that reminds me of another debt that was paid that cannot be paid back. And that's what Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, did on the cross. He paid a price that could not be paid. So that we could not longer be separated from the Father, but we could be reunited with Him. And it says that the night He was betrayed, He broke bread and drank wine. And He went into the garden and prayed. And He prayed, Lord, Father, let this path cut pass before me. But not my will, but your will be done. And it says he was so grieved and he prayed so hard that he sweated drops of blood. But like the saying said, courage is not without fear. Courage is having fear and still doing the right thing. Jesus did the right thing. He gave up his life so that we could live. So in just a minute, in the back of the room, there's crackers and there's juice representing the body that was broken on the cross and the blood that was spilled for our sins. You see, blood had to be spilled for the forgiveness of sins. But Jesus, being the perfect Lamb of God, having never sinned, shed his blood. So blood no longer had to be shed for the forgiveness of sins. He was the final and ultimate sacrifice. So in this last song, when you're ready, make your way back and just remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross.